Chapter Seven: Threatened Treasures. How can Africa's cultural her heritage be protected and preserved? From 1999 to 2003, Scott Mac Eachon was on a re- rescue mission. Exxon Corporation, now Exxon Mobil, planned to dig a 690-mile, 1110 kilometers long pipeline from southwest Chad to the Atlantic coast of Cam- Cameroon. They asked Mac Eachon, a professor at Bowdoin. Dune University in Maine to put together a team of African and international experts to save any cultural treasures in the path of the pipeline. The team excavated 309 sites in Cameroon and 163 in Chad, making this the largest archaeological project ever in Central Africa. The Nubian Temple of Caleb Bzha- Kalabsha was threatened by the rising waters of Lake Nasser, so Yunsko moved to its present site near the Aswan Dam in the 1960s. The team found iron working sites with smelting furnaces dating back about 2100 years and stone tools more than 50,000 years old. This kind of project is sometimes called rescue archaeology or, in the United States, cultural resource management. Experts try to locate, document, and save cultural treasures before they are destroyed by building works. A similar project took place in Egypt and Sudan before the Aswan Dam was built on the Nile, creating a lake that flooded a large area. A new project is scheduled before another dam is built in northern Sudan. Diverse problems. There are many threats to Africa's archaeological treasures. War and political instability make some places too dangerous for archaeologists. Other sites are extremely remote. A number of countries do not have money to fund research museums and exhibits, or programs to train archaeologists. Lack of money also makes it hard to protect sites from environmental threats such as floods. Since 1981, for example, about 10% of the deposits at the ancient city of Genjeno have been lost due to wind and water wearing away the surface of the soil. Looting is also common. At Gen Geno, poor farmers have dug up terracotta statues and other items to sell to dealers and collectors. Looting has affected an estimated 80 to 90 percent of all archaeological sites in Africa. It always damages a site, often seriously. In about 2 percent of cases, Looting completely destroys the historical importance of a site. Because of its location, rock art is vulnerable to many types of damage. The surfaces on which it is created flake over time. Animals damage it when they enter caves for shelter and rub against the walls. Rain and other elements can wash away the surfaces of paintings. Conservationists can apply sealing materials, but that does not prevent looting. By 1999, about 40% of the rock carvings and 10% of the rock paintings in Africa had been damaged or stolen. What can be done? International organizations have acted to protect cultural treasures. In 1970, UNESCO the, Col- UNESCO, the cultural branch of the United Nations, passed a convention to encourage nations to help each other to tackle the illegal trade in antiquities, valuable ancient artifacts. UNESCO has also made a list of World Heritage Sites, including several in Africa. Listed sites receive international recognition. 
funding and support. Laws made by individual nations also help. Several African countries have passed through laws, tough laws to punish those who harm archaeological sites and artifacts. The Trust of African Art is an organization set up in 1996 to protect, re restore, and make copies of rock art. Artists have spent hours crouching in caves or perched on ledges to make copies. Efforts to preserve rock art began many years ago. In 1954, a team of artists in Tassili and Asia in the Sahara endured wind, heat, and cold to trace paintings. They produced 800 copies that can now be seen around the world. Through efforts like these, we can appreciate and study these work for many years to come. Archaeologists excavate a site found during the construction of the Exxon Pipeline in Central Africa to evaluate its importance. In 1995, the Getty Conversation Institute carried out conservation work at Latoli in Tanzania, the site of the oldest known hominid footprints. The years ahead. For decades, most archaeology in Africa has been carried out by Europeans or Americans. Today, more local archaeologists are learning to uncover their past and protect cultural treasures. People from 16 sub-Saharan countries attended the Africa 2009 Rock Art Conservation Course in Namibia in July 2006. It was sponsored by the National Museums of Namibia, UNESCO, and the National Heritage Board of Sweden. Participants learned how to document and preserve art, and how to pre present it to the public. Archaeologist Roderick McIntosh noted, Despite several financial crises, several African nations have a well-trained second generation of archaeologists trained in Africa. He hopes that this new generation will convince their governments to fund field research and museums in past laws that protect Africa's past. They can also help to show other Africans why archaeology is important, says Macintosh. If they succeed, not only will they have won a victory for Africa, but they will have set an example for the rest of the world. Archaeologists take soil samples in Chad, hoping to find artifacts or other traces of human occupation. The end.